I'm Stuart Thompson, the editor of Digital TV Europe. I'm here with Hanno Narius, who's SVP of Telesta Broadband Networks. Hanno, looking at uh, the strategies of cable MSOs as they look to deploy high-speed broadband, what's the, what are the strategic options between investing in fiber on one hand and upgrading HFC on the other? Right, so the most important topic is that any investment into fixed networks needs to be multi-gigabit capable, preferably up to 10 gig. And uh, there are two choices available. On one hand, there is fiber, but also there is doxies for the good old cable network. And uh, both will be deployed. And actually the cable MSOs have a unique competitive advantage. They can have more gradual uh, deployment of fiber as they can still rely on doxies in big part of their networks. So that will give uh, cable MSOs particularly advantage. And do you see any significant differences in the strategies employed by operators in North America versus those in Europe? Absolutely. The investment waves are happening at different time speeds. Now, in US, uh, there is shortage of spectrum. The US cable MSOs, especially in the upstream, do not have enough spectrum, and that was becoming a problem during the pandemic. Hence, there is a high sense of urgency to move quickly to 1.8 gig, and uh, with that, they can skip the 1.2 gig investment wave, which that wave already happened in Europe. So a big part of Europe is already 1.2 gig ready, and hence there is much more free spectrum available in the European networks, which is still good for the next two, three years to go. So with that in mind, how do you see the roadmap for HFC upgrades in, in Europe? Now in Europe, there is this uh, dilemma between do I invest in DOCSIS 4.0 or do I invest in fiber? And uh, there are basically three top level strategies that a European operator with cable assets can take. The first very straightforward one is to continue investing in existing HFC plant deploying DOCSIS 4.0. That will give 10 gig speeds and life for the network for next 10 to 15 years ahead. The other extreme is to go directly to fiber and do fiber overbuilding and through that means get to 10 gig infrastructure. That you need to do quickly because you would like to do only limited years of maintenance of existing cable infrastructure. But then there is also a sec uh, kind of middle scenario where the cable operator can first deploy fiber in areas where there is no coax. And uh, in the existing coax footprint, they could be deploying DOCSIS 4.0, but only in the cable modems or the remote phi nodes, maybe doing 1.8 gig amps. And they would still get multi-gigabit speeds, not 10 gig, but without doing very heavy project fashion replacement of all the home environment or the passives. Well, that's an interesting middle point that could lease 10 years of life to existing cable plant before fiber overbuilding. So how do you see the timeline for the deployment of 1.8 gigahertz actives? And then beyond that also, uh, the deployment of 1.8 gigahertz distributed access architecture. Right. So the starting point for any scenario to go to 1.8 gig is starting deployment of DAA. And DOCSIS 3.1 DAA is ready to go. There is still a lot more speed that should be seeked in Europe to deploy more DAA because that is the enabler for any 10 gig infrastructure and 1.8 gig infrastructure. Now uh, you can also start to do the coax part of the network with passives. There are already full range of 1.8 gig passives available. The amplifiers are the next in line. Uh, we are starting to deploy 1.8 gig amps in US this year. And uh, that's when the rollout of uh, amplifiers can start. And eventually then you can upgrade the 3.1 RPD nodes to 4.0 at a later date. Probably we are still two years out from that one. And finally, Hannah, what advice or recommendations would you give to operators who are 
contemplating which strategy to adopt? That's of course a big question and humble question. I have to be humble, but I would point three, to three topics uh, what should be looked at. The first one is, I repeat, DAA is the way to go. And the DAA is also an enabler for convergence benefits in network infrastructure. So same Ethernet backhaul can solve both 5G mobile infrastructure, it can serve as backhaul for DOCSIS 4.0 RPDs, and it can serve as backhaul for eventual fiber deployment with remote OLTs. So that's a no regret move, and that should be moving faster ahead. The second thing that I would like to point out is that now we have lots of evidence that DOCSIS 4.0 works. It is something that you can count on and you can make a predictable investment plan for 4.0. So it is a real option in the MS, cable MSO's uh, investment alternatives. The third one is a very pinpoint topic. Uh, when deploying fiber, uh, the uh, multi-dwelling units will be a headache. And DOCSIS 4.0 could be speeding up deploying fiber infrastructure with multi-gigabit speeds, also in MDU environments, in campus environments. While fiber to the prem would be the way to go, DOCSIS could be playing a nice role uh, in the MDU space. Lots for operators to think about. Hannah, thanks very thanks much. To, thanks to all. Thank you.